Many people don't, uh, don't realize, but AI chips are not able to actualize their full potential due to the thermal management limitations that they have. They're not able to achieve their full potential because there are temperature sensors across the chip that selectively turn it off when it's getting too hot. So what we do is we take an advanced logic AI chip, we bond a diamond directly to the back of that chip, mm -hmm. and then our customers are able to put three to five times the amount of power into that chip mm -hmm. without raising the junction temperature one single degree. IPX, we're here at PCIM 2025, and it's not often that we hear about a new substrate coming out. In this case, we're talking to Diamond Foundry, and as you might have guessed, it's Diamond. You might be thinking, Diamond though, is that actually electrically conductive? The answer is no, it's thermally conductive. Let's talk to Russell from Diamond Foundry. Hey, He's going to tell us all about it. Awesome. Yeah. So. What would you like to know, Elliot? What can okay, I tell you? Well, what have we got here? Why, why okay. diamonds to begin with? Okay, Diamond Foundry. So Diamond Foundry is the largest diamond maker in the world, the largest diamond producer, full stop. No other company in the world produces more diamonds from any mine or any other man-made source in the world. And we've been around since 2012. So we started in the jewelry business. You can see here is a nice little two carat uh, diamond. Whoop. And people love these diamonds because they're environmentally sustainable. And I'll talk more about that in just a moment. But I know we're here at PCIM. We're yeah, here to talk about electronics. We're talking directly to engineers at home. So what That's do right. the engineers need to so, know about your so, diamonds? So just a little background. So we we grow the largest diamonds in the world. This is an example of a block. I'll let you kind of hold is that, this. Is that a block it's of a, diamond? It's actually a block of diamond. We grow big, large blocks of diamonds. This is a super yep. tiny one just to show you there with the jewelry. And then we can take those diamonds and we can put them into form factors that can be used in electronics. And before I talk about that, I wanna explain why that's important. So many engineers who are on your channel, many of your subscribers know that diamond is the most thermally conductive material in the world. There's nothing else even close. So more, more than copper, more than most Oh, measures. much more. This is 2200 watts per meter Kelvin. Okay. And we actually have ways to even enhance that further to over 3000 watts per meter Kelvin. There is nothing even close. It's more than 10 times therm more thermally conductive than anything. Right. And so, so basically, what we can do with the diamond is we can grow these big blocks of diamonds, we can singulate them, so we grow a big block, we can singulate them, and I know you were talking about silicon carbide mm -hmm. and, Nan and GAN, they, just like you can grow a silicon wafer, we can singulate, and then we can put into a form factor where we can actually attach them to semiconductor chips. So how this, thin are you, are you getting this? This right here is about 200 microns thick, um, so you can see there, it almost feels like paper. sharp as a knife. Yeah, it's sharp as a knife. It's single, true single crystal diamond. And we, we use this in a number of different, very interesting ways. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to talk about AI and then we're going to go into power yeah, electronics. Yeah, cool. We're out of power electronics. Big, so, big talking so point. Many people don't, uh, don't realize, but AI chips are not able to actualize their full potential due to the thermal management limitations that they have. So if this is public information, if you look back um, to the NVIDIA H100 hopper chip, it's made up of, it has a couple of different tiles that have about 570 tensor cores. Those tensor cores are firing all the time when they're doing heavy uh, training or inference. And but this is joining so much heat together. You're just creating. Tons of heat, right? Yeah. Yep. They're not able to achieve their full potential because there are temperature sensors across the chip that selectively turn it off when it's getting too hot. Yeah, we'll slow well, it, yeah. Exactly, so what we do is we take an advanced logic AI chip, full field reticle, 33 millimeter by 26 millimeter, we bond a diamond directly to the back of that chip, mm -hmm. and then our customers are able to put three to five times the amount of power into that chip mm -hmm. without raising the junction temperature one single degree. Okay. What that means in terms of performance, in terms of flops and tops for the most advanced uh, semiconductor AI chips, I can't directly quote, but it is huge. And you can imagine if you can take silicon and just by putting diamond on it, you can increase the performance like that. It is quite dramatic. Okay, so let's actually let the engineers at home figure out what this looks like in practice. So you've got your silicon substrate or, or you've got your PNA and doped regions where all your transistor, everything's happening there. That's right. How does the diamond, you, so you physically bond it onto the silicon, So in this, where do we go from there? In this AI chip example, so what we do is we take the active silicon that is a very, very thin layer. It's just a, mm -hmm. just a few microns in thickness. For sure. The rest of that wafer, that uh, 775 microns of that wafer is passive silicon. All it's doing is holding in the heat. Mm -hmm. So we typically ask on the advanced nodes that they thin that silicon wafer, and then we bond these chiplets directly to the back 
of that active silicon thinned wafer, mm -hmm. and that's able to pull the heat away. And then, of course, you manage the heat further downstream with your heat sinks and, and impingement cooling and things like that. Amazing. So this, this isn't replacing heat sinks or, or thermal paste. This is creating a more efficient way to physically get heat out of your silicon wafer. That's right. It's okay. the only way to take the heat immediately away from the hot spot in the mm -hmm. chip. Nothing else can get that close and nothing else transfers heat that quickly. So once you move that heat away, you still need to use a, a management technique to manage you know, a heat sink or again, liquid phase cooling, these types of approaches to basically take that away. But you can get it immediately away from the hot spots and allow the chip not to have to govern itself and to turn off because it's getting too hot. Therefore, you can get a lot more performance and or energy efficiency out of those chips. Right on. So engineers at home, I know we're wondering, how much does this cost? <laughs> it's diamond at the end of the day. This is not a, this is not cheap material. It is rare. It is difficult to create. What what sort of price will this be adding to a regular piece of silicon? Is that a question you can answer? Sure, I can add, I can answer that for sure. I want to kind of show you here. One of the things that we're doing in tor in in an effort to bring down the cost is we continue to grow larger and larger diamonds. So this is an example of a of a diamond wafer. You check that out. It's about 300 microns thick. Uh, kind of amazing, right? Um, and we're growing larger and larger blocks of diamond. We're doing that the most cost-effective way, the most environmentally friendly way possible. And so as we grow this material more cost-effectively, the price is coming down. For the advanced AI chips, we're working with all the top five AI customers today, mm -hmm. and it is not an issue at all. Diamond is more expensive than, uh, you know, of course, like a, a silicon nitride or some aluminum nitride, excuse me, or something like that, but it's not cost prohibitive for the AI chips. And I'm gonna talk about power electronics in just a moment as well. Yeah, can, can we circle back real quick? You said you're working with the top five AI- That's right. Conducted, uh, sorry, top five AI- Chip makers. Chip makers in yeah. the world. That's right. So this product may already be in your favorite NPU back at home. It's not correct? in mass production yet today. So it okay. is in prototyping and uh, at the stages with all of the major top five players and also in the production plans for some. So again, when you can see the kind of performance they can achieve just by adding diamond to the already existing designs that they're doing, it's extraordinarily compelling. So so next let's talk a little bit since we are at PCIM today here. Yep, let's talk a little, power. little bit about power electronics. So in addition to diamond being the most thermally conductive material in the world, it's also the best insulator in the world. So it provides one kilovolt of isolation between uh, high currents and voltage at, for one micrometer. So extraordinarily thin layer is the per perfect insulator. So we and, might see this separating power lines in the near future. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So we can do all kinds of innovative things. And we developed a couple of prototype products uh, with our team in, in uh, San Jose to basically show the power of diamond. This is an example of the T-Pack. T-Pack is yep. here. Many, Very traditional many, size, many people yes. have this type of product. We put a diamond on top here. And I'm going to show you how we, how we um, did this because I know your uh, your audience We've is got quite it technical. <laughs> yeah, quite technical, right? So basically, here's the here's the DF pack uh, opened up. So you can see here the diamond here is on the top. Yep. The bottom of it. So this is the top. The bottom is metalized so that we can do an attachment. In this case, it's a sintering based attachment. And then you can see here on the edge, we have a the creep, so the exclusion. Mm -hmm. So basically the metal is not covering the entire uh, diamond and therefore you achieve the isolation. We're able to put half the number of silicon carbide chips in this DF pack and achieve the same performance as a, as a uh, T pack or put double and achieve double the performance in a very, very small form factor because we have that perfect thermal conductive material mm -hmm. and the perfect isolation material. We're also able to do some really incredible things here. Um, this is an example of a uh, prototype traction inverter that we built that has the same performance as the Tesla Model 3. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we had a Tesla Model 3 that is supposed to be here at the show, but it got stuck in customs. Oh no! So we've been fighting with that for the past week, but uh, we'll, we'll get it back eventually. But this has exactly the same performance and it's miniaturized at one ninth of the size of the, of the Tesla traction inverter. You're this kidding. has been evaluated by two automotive companies. So they saw the power of diamond, they saw this design, and then their engineers, their minds just, the light bulb goes off and they say, wow, I wanted to design with this. I've never had access to this type of material before. So this is completely getting rid of all thermal bottlenecks, which may have been stopping the, the acceleration of, of what we can really do with AI. That's right. I mean, we're, I mean, we're basically putting a completely uh, new material with some of the most interesting properties of any material known to mankind in their hands for the first time ever. Because when diamonds come out of the ground, they come out and they're very small. They're like this. Yep. They don't, they've never been in a, in, a, in a form factor where you can actually do work with them and they've never been cost effective enough.
right, so we're at PCIM and the fire alarm has just got off. <laughs> um, strangely enough, we want to finish this interview and figure out how they actually make these diamonds. That's the important part for us. This clearly, Russell himself is not digging up these diamonds. So let's go ahead and find out what is going on. How are you making this? Yeah, so um, unfortunately we have to leave here because of the fire alarm, but um, we have a great video and some uh, nice artwork there to show our first high volume manufacturing facility, which is in uh, Washington in the United States. We've been in production for several years and we do a CBD based reaction to grow the diamond from a seed, which we also create on our own. We've optimized the growth process to be the most cost effective, fastest CBD based diamond growth process in the world and we're growing massive, massive diamonds. I would have shown you here from our artwork on the booth that we have our Gen H8 tools, which are sort of individual CVD reactors, a big, huge bank of those. And then we had a video of our newest facility, which we call Diamond Foundry 2, or short, or simply DF2, mm -hmm. which just recently, within the past two months, started mass production in Spain. We've located both of these facilities near completely green energy sources. So our first one in Washington is near a big hydro dam. If you look on the map, it's literally right there. We get all that uh, consistent, low, very low cost energy for many, many decades so that we can produce these diamonds in an environmentally friendly manner and in the most cost effective way. In Spain, likewise, we have the opportunity to benefit from unlimited solar and wind based power. And so we're growing these diamonds in a very clean and environmental way. And that's one more thing I wanted to mention is that we are the only company in the world that is using a completely renewable energy source to grow the diamonds. We are the number one purchaser of high purity methane. So as you know, of course, methane is a greenhouse gas. Mm -hmm. We are the number one purchaser of meth methane. So we take methane, we use clean energy, and we sequester that methane in diamonds that go on to perpetuate all the uh, energy efficient applications we talked about in AI, power electronics, charging, etc. for the future. So we're really excited to be uh, to be part of that and uh, happy to have you here and do this interview, even awesome. though it's a little unconventional. <laughs> yeah, now around the parking lot. iTexas, thank you very much for running. We'll roll the credits now. Thank you very yeah, much. Really a pleasure, Alex. Awesome. Thank you. All righty. Good news. <laughs>